bromide, sodium iodide, sodium fluoride. Acetone is an organic solvent. So one which has greater covalent character will be soluble in acetone. Now you see chloride, bromide, fluoride, iodide. Iodide has the largest size. Since cation is same, so naturally the covalent character will depend upon the size of the anion. Iodide has larger size, so sodium iodide will have greater covalent character. As a result, it will be soluble in acetone. Now, after this ionic bond, we come to the covalent bond. Regarding covalent bond, it is the sharing of electrons. According to valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, uh, sorry, according to valence bond approach, valence orbitals containing unpaired electrons, that too with opposite spin, will overlap and strength of the bond depends upon the extent of overlapping. Greater the extent of overlapping, stronger the bond formed. This overlapping can be in two ways, either along the internuclear axis giving rise to sigma bond or perpendicular to internuclear axis giving rise to pi bond. Dear students, sigma bond determines the shape of the molecule and pi bond shortens the bond length. You cannot have a molecule in the valence bond approach in which there exists a pi bond and no sigma bond. So, if there are two atoms in a molecule, then there will be one sigma bond and others will be pi bond. Now, look at the question. The ratio of number of sigma to pi bond in mesitylene. First of all, form the structure of mesitylene. This is the structure of mesitylene. 1, 2, 1, 3, 5, trimethyl benzene. Now, dear students, Please, tick mark like this, the number of sigma bonds. Don't write CH3 because there you can commit errors. Then on each of these, do put like this, indicating that these are hydrogen atoms. Now count the number of uh, sigma bonds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So 21 sigma bonds. And pi bonds are 3. So, ratio of sigma to pi bond comes out to be 7. Dear students, once again I may tell you, supposing you get in benzene, please do expand the structure. Write it like this. And each line represents the sigma bond. Now count the number of sigma and pi bonds. If you will not draw the structure, you will commit errors. Then, after this, we come to the concept of hybridization. Since valence bond approach tells you that the number of bond depends upon or the valency of the element depends upon the number of unpaired electrons. But in carbon we know there are only two unpaired electrons where its valency is 4. This was explained on the basis of hybridization. Means the vacant or the vacant or fully filled or half filled orbitals they overlap and form new orbitals having equivalent energy. If you have to find out the hybridization please follow this rule. Supposing there is carbonate count the number of valence electrons. In carbon there are 4, in oxygen there are 6, Num uh, in, in oxygen there are 6 valence electrons, then total number of oxygen atoms are 3, negative charge to be added, positive charge to be subtracted, total comes out to be 24, if it is more than 8, then divide it by 8. So it comes out to be 3, it means 3 orbitals are involved in hybridization, there is no hybridization without S orbital. So, 1s, 2p, it means it is sp2. In the same way, if you have to go for xcf4, xenon has got 8 valence electrons, fluorine has 7, multiplied by 4, total comes out to be 36, divide it by 8, again 4, remainder, divide remainder into pairs, 4 is remainder, so 2 pairs, means 6 orbitals, means sp3d2 hybridization. Now, once you have predicted the hybridization, the shape you have to learn if it is sp linear, sp2, triangular planar, sp3, tetrahedral, sp3d, then it is trigonal, bipyramidal, sp3d2, then it is octahedral. But at the same time, see, if it is a lone pair of electron, that will distort the geometry. If it has, supposing the hybridization comes out to be sp3, but there is one lone pair, the shape will not be tetrahedral, it will be pyramidal. In the same way, if it is sp3d2, and there is one lone pair of electron, then it will not be trigonal bipyramidal, but distorted tetrahedral. That you can learn from our booklet. Now, coming to the question, in which of the following, the central atom is sp3, 